Yo, yo, this is Zach Bradshaw, the Greens Bar SEO Pro, back once again to Wax Poetic about SEO. So in this video, I'm going to give you another crappy little presentation. Then we are going to go over some live examples of how to use keywords within your content, within, within your off-page efforts to optimize for SEO. And this is something I think a lot of people get wrong or don't understand the full nuance of. And it's just something I want to shed some light on partially again for clients that I'm leading by the hand as opposed to doing everything for them. Um, and it's important that people actually understand this and not just, you know, no offense guys, but just listen to a Neil Patel video or somebody like that. That's not really explaining to you how search engines work and how you actually, how this stuff works practically, you know, for your brick and mortar business or your local business, whatever you're doing. So a keyword is any word or any phrase that somebody types into a search engine or now speaks into their phone, um, depending on what you know search engine they're using, in order to find out the answer to a question they have, whether it's you know what pizza place should I order pizza from right now, or whether it's um, you know why does broccoli make me fart, whatever the case may be. Now there's all different keywords and based on what you're looking at, you know something may get a million searches or it may get ten searches. This is this can kind of be broken down into long and short tail keywords where you have some keywords that are super general and you know may host a lot of different searchers intent like if somebody searches for broccoli there's uh, a myriad of in there's a lot of information that somebody may be searching for so um, there's a lot of results that may came, come up and there may be more people searching that or something like you know vegan broccoli quiche or broccoli nutrition facts or why is broccoli green all these things may have less searches um, and you know potentially higher competition or less competition depending on um, the dynamics of that keyword you know if something has buy in it or sale or something like that there's obviously going to be more competition um, from stores and things like that in order to get in on that keyword so um, this is usually or generally the internet's most lucrative traffic because you're catching people when they're actually searching for something as opposed to, um, you know, a banner ad or a Facebook ad where they're obviously on another website, probably entertaining themselves. Um, and you're trying to redirect them to your site with the banner ad as opposed to, um, you know, SEO traffic or Google ads, Bing ads, um, YouTube ads, where somebody probably just said, like, how do I do this? Or um, who's the best service for this near me or whatever the case may be. Um, and you can even using something like Facebook, use retargeting from people who have visited your site from SEO. Um, and, and that can be the most lucrative Facebook ads, right? Or is the retargeting ads that are based on SEO traffic um, or potentially pay-per-click. Uh, I guess it's not AdWords traffic, but Google ads traffic. Now, um, there's been an evolution in how these keywords go early on the internet searches were super basic where you really just like typed in a couple of search phrases and it wouldn't be a whole almost sentence that you can type out now um, and that kind of led to people over optimizing and just like stuffing keywords um, in all different places um, and not really addressing users and now as google gets more intelligent um, about how to read what's both on the page, but also what people are searching for to understand that if somebody searches broccoli, now we need to probably show 10 different results because there's 10 different things that somebody might be looking at as opposed to um, the most comprehensive guide to um, fasting with only broccoli, whatever the case may be, right? So depending on how detailed those searches are, what words are in those searches, Google is making assumptions, um, generally supported by some mach machine learning, um, to determine what results should appear. And it used to not be like that. It used to just be like, hey, let's find these words. And it was almost exclusively on semantic relationships. Now there's a lot more in, uh, user engagement metrics involved um, and, you know, obviously some other things in play as well. So in the future and, you know, even even right now, and that's part of what has contributed to the evolution of this point is that voice search becomes more and more important as you, you know, you just want to say like, OK, Google, take me to or, you know, take me home, take me to the closest mechanic, take me to, you know, whatever the case may be, um, as opposed to the basic searches that used to be on the Internet that didn't have all that uh, data. There may, um, you know, depending on how old you are, you may not remember the uh, AOL <laughs> days, but um, that's what we're talking about here. So um, at the same time, Google has expanded how they display search right so um, obviously you almost always still get the 10 organic results um, that people are used to those blue links um, and you you know read your little description you choose which one you want to um, select then um, 
I don't know, I guess like 10 years ago now, they added these maps and knowledge graph. Um, it's maybe more than that now, um, but they they added more elements and they're continuing to do, do so to where now they have the people also ask. Um, and there's things like within hotels where they're almost, I'm not sure what their end game is, but it looks like they're trying to play the middleman um, between searchers and connecting you with Tripwire or TripAdvisor and um, Hotels.com and all that. And they compare those rates right there. Or if you search for something like weather, they'll display the forecast right there, right? So um, Google is turning not only into a, uh, middleman to send people to the right content, but they're also just grabbing the content off of web pages and displaying it, um, which, you know, there could be some conflict there where it's like, hey, you, you kind of just stole my content. Now the users aren't reaching you, um, but maybe the branding is. And, it's, you know, it's a um, ever-evolving landscape, but it, it there's a lot that goes into um, Google trying to uh, stay ahead of Bing and other search engines to provide the best product. So they're continuing they're going to continue to do that. And the more that you participate in Google strategies, generally the better off you're going to be. Um, but as far as keywords go, um, early on, again, you could just stuff keywords in different places. Like there, sometimes you'd see a website where at the bottom of it, um, it might say like, it might have all those keywords, like broccoli recipe, peas, broccoli quiche recipes, broccoli, uh, vegan recipe, peas, broccoli, whatever. And there was no links or anything like that. And it would just be a block of a whole bunch of crappy keywords at the bottom. Um, and that would help you show up for all those different things as Google, um, grew and matured in its algorithm. Um, then in order to, and it wasn't really a punishment, they changed their algorithms or algorithms got better. Um, but they punished how those, essentially how your keywords were placed on your page um, and basically your keyword density where people used to literally measure like, okay, if my page has at least 7% of the words on this page or this keyword, it's going to do better than if it has 5%, right? So at a certain point, Google punished in different ways that they're not, um, and that's part of the point that I'm making right here is that Google punished it and they punished it off page and on page, um, but white hat SEOs ran screaming for the hills and making a whole bunch of articles about how not to over optimize and penguin this and blah, 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 blah. Um, but black cats just kept testing stuff. So now many white hat SEOs are like, every time somebody's like, I have an SEO agency and I'd give an audit audit to them. I'm like, dude, they're missing everything. Um, cause people don't understand how these keywords need to be integrated. Right? So Google was saying, don't put all these keywords at the bottom of your page. They can fight that. They don't, they say like, don't overstuff your anchor text. It, they can fight that. But there's a lot of things where at the same time, they're trying to pick up additional data. And if you understand where, where they're trying to pick up that data, just make sure you ping us, ping the algorithm at all the different places. Um, you're going to get a lot higher keyword association and potentially more keywords on any specific page. Um, and that's kind of what I'm going to try to articulate to you here to a, you know, large degree. So, um, or obviously not the, not everything I know about it, but so when it comes to keyword research and actually understand what keywords you need to stuff in your pages and get into the right place, um, there's different levels to it. Like when I'm doing keyword research, I might do 30 minute keyword research or I might do keyword research for like three days, um, having to take breaks because it's like I'm literally just combing lists of thousands of keywords trying to figure out what's relevant. Like, hey, what is this? Um, and, and very often these things teach me new things about somebody's business model or, um, you know, it, they answer questions that the person when I, you know, went through all these different questions, asking about stuff that they may have left out or they may not have understood who all their competitors were or whatever the case may be. Um, keyword research, there's lots of different nuance to it. And, and it really depends on what you're trying to find out. Right. So, um, the, the services that you may be offering, like for me, you know, web design, um, social media marketing, SEO, obviously. Um, but then also the vertical. So like if I wanted to attack specifically rehab SEO or for example, um, bail bonds SEO or uh, in-home uh, healthcare SEO, like whatever the different urgent care SEO, it, whatever different clients I've had um, trying to, and even clients that I wanted to go after potentially um, like lawyer SEO or something like that. If I wanted a lawyer client um, having those different pages on your site, and that could be all different things um, to uh, potentially uh, ideal client profiles, but also like, um, I don't it's too nuanced for me to try to explain without uh, showing examples, but then also location. So like on Greensboro SEO Pro, we're targeting, you know, basically the top 10 cities in North Carolina and soon to expand the different locations that we're going after. Right. Um, and then you also have your branding keywords where somebody may be searching for 
Um, you know, one of my clients, Estes, for example, they get a lot of searches that are like Estes art sand, Estes aquarium sand, um, where people are actually putting in their name. Um, and then some other ones where their products get searches, right? Where permacolor quartz get searched, um, and some other things like that. Then you have people who may search, be searching for reviews of you, like Greensboro SEO per reviews, um, where somebody may be looking to see what Better Business Bureau and uh, Consumer Affairs and uh, whatever else Trustpilot um, has to say about you as opposed to just what you have to say about you. And then also your competitors where you may want to, you know, rank for um, something like, you know, softwares do this a lot where um, Infusionsoft might want to try to rank for, well, now it's called Keep, but Infusionsoft may want to try to rank for um, HubSpot alternative, you know what I mean? Um, or HubSpot comparison or whatever the case may be. And then you have the, what's typically blog posts, um, but can be, you know, there can be some local uh, equity that you can gain here, but solutions um, to problems and answers to questions. So like, uh, how do I fix my car? You know, how do I do this? Or, you know, what is the answer to this question? What are the types of hosting I can get? Whatever the case may be, there's all types of different search volume. Um, sorry, I could not keep with the, the broccoli analogy to, to hit all these. So, um, when it comes to your keyword stuffing, um, and that's basically what I like every word I'm writing on a page when I'm building a site from scratch, I'm paying attention to, is this a, the right sentence for me to inject a keyword? Like literally every single sentence or every single element that I'm, I'm using, I'm trying to see if there's an opportunity to do it and it not be spammy. Right. Um, I want people to read my text, um, read, you know, any text that Greensboro SEO pro creates and like eat it up and be like, Oh my gosh, that is the best thing I've ever read. Um, but at the same time, I want to ping Google in every single way that I can. So you have your base keyword and it's specific search phrases. I'll show you this in Greensboro SEO pros specific keywords in a moment, um, where, you know, I'm literally right. Make sure that I have Greensboro SEO on the page and then SEO in Greensboro. And then I might also want to have, um, SEO in Greensboro NC all on the page, right? Um, I might also want to spell out search engine optimization or search engine marketing within that, right? Um, there's various other synonyms where, um, you know, I target expert, I target consultant, I target agency, I target company, I target service um, across those different things. So um, for any one specific page, you may be targeting, and I'll show you that specific example, you may be targeting all of those different variations of those phrases and how you have the keywords on that page specifically like will dictate essentially a limit to um, how well you can show up for those. So just make sure you have all the variations, make sure you touch every single variation um, and you will increase your chances. And this is just straight out when it comes to the content that people have on their pages, um, something that people are very often missing. And it's just like, dude, just rephrase that, put that some somewhere else, add it. You know, very often you have to add 500 words or a thousand words to make sure you're doing this without, um, you know, being spammy, but there's very often 500 or a thousand or 1500 words that you guys should be adding to your website anyway um, to target these keywords and to explain your services better to uh, your users. So then you also have branded keywords. So again, those SS keywords, but also Estes Aquarium Sand and things like that. Um, stuffing your pages, not necessarily stuffing it with Estes, 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 but making sure that you're saying like Estes Colored Quartz or Estes, um, whatever the case may be, will help you make sure that you rank for those and your competitors can't take them from you. Um, so then pieces of the whole as well. So if I want to rank for SEO because SEO touches like everything, I need to make sure that on my SEO pages that I want to rank that I also have web design, social media marketing, internet marketing, other pieces to the whole of SEO. Um, or if I want to rank for internet marketing, then I could have SEO under that, right? So there's all different variations of that, but like whatever your specific industry is as pieces to the whole. And if you are better detailing the steps that go into that, um, is a lot of, a lot of times the ways to get some pieces to the whole, um, or whatever the case may be, you are setting yourself up to have a better potential to rank in Google. And very often you can just fix some of these things, add some of this content, and you're going to start to rank better um, because you seem like you know more of what you're talking about. Because seven times out of 10, when Google sees a page that talks about SEO, it also talks about web design. So um, now you're fitting into that mold and showing that you're also um, in in the authority with that, right? And obviously you're not just going to go copy that content from somebody else, but um, make sure that if your competitors are talking about it, you're talking about it and then some, right? Um, so then you have overlapping keywords and overlapping keyword phrases that are, um, for example, 
I've uh, on my homepage am ranking for SEO companies and then also targeting internet marketing companies on the same page, right? Um, and eventually I will break that off to another page, but right now I'm running an experiment and it's doing well. You'll see part of it in um, this, the rest of this video, but going after keywords that are not not exactly the same, um, but have a potential to also rank on the same page because they go together to have digital marketing consultant, internet marketing consultant, and SEO all together on the same page is, you know, nothing wrong with that. I might even be able to get marketing company right there on that same homepage as well. Now, you also have tier two targets. So it is smart, and people miss this all the time, to, um, because I have all of these different pages, I'm not only going to make sure that I I add um, web design to my page one time, but I'm going to add web design, web development, web, other variations of that a couple of times to my homepage so that I can rank for web design more easily, right? Um, I'm going to eventually have a web design page and on that web design page, I'm going to stuff the keywords real nice like, but I want to make sure on pages that are also linking to that page, I make those pages more relevant for web design as well. So the more words I have, and this is what I'm calling second tier targets, the second tier target here um, is the next page that this is also linking to. So it's helpful um, for me to link to write words um, from the pages that I'm linking to, whether that's on my site or on another site. That may be a little bit nuanced, might need, to, need an example, um, and it will probably get one eventually. So um, another thing that you can use to, again, what people worry about is over-optimization penalties where um, they are worried about, like, if I keep putting Greensboro SEO, Greensboro SEO, Greensboro SEO, Greensboro SEO, um, I'm going to trigger an over-optimization penalty, which is not really a penalty, which a penalty is when Google rips you off the search engines, and if you search for your brand name, you're not going to show up. Um, but this is an algorithmic penalty, I guess, where Google's saying, like, hey, they're over-optimizing, and you will have a really hard time um, getting past the second or third page. You will still be there on the second or third page, um, but unless you're just head and shoulders above of everybody else, um, you probably won't even make the first page just because they hold you back, um, you know, five or 10%. I'm not sure quite how it works, but um, generally what happens is websites that should be on the first page, maybe in the top three, um, are held to the second or the third page of Google. Um, if they're over optimizing, you can like, oh, let me go remove this keyword or change this from Greensboro SEO to SEO in Greensboro and fix that over optimization penalty. And it's not really a penalty. It's an algorithmic whatever it is. So um, then the long Gotti keyword expressions, I'm sorry, I think that's what I was talking about. Long Gotti keyword expressions are um, and this is not necessarily just link expressions. This should have said keyword expressions um, might be uh, the best. SEO services in Greensboro, right? Something longer like that, or the best SEO service of all time in Greensboro, or a whole sentence that doesn't even all talk about SEO that is now a link or is now a title tag or is now um, an alt text description or is now some other place that I'm about to show you in a moment to stuff these keyword expressions um, that is like a long, gaudy expression um, that has the keyword in it. Um, and then you also have your curveballs where you just may just want to balance it out and throw in a click here or a, um, you know, whatever your different, uh, follow this link or whatever the different things are, um, that you want to use for a curveball in that. Now, where do you put these keywords? Um, in your website metadata, most people know this, you need to optimize your title tag and your, um, meta description for SEO and make sure you have your keyword in there make sure it's click through rate strong as well. I have a video on that. Um, but you, everybody pretty much knows the headings, um, but you also want to other formatted. And I guess I said accented text here, but other places like bullet points or bolded text, um, italics, pull quotes, things like that, that stand out on the page. It's not always just about headings. Um, I've seen tests where people basically just, instead of using headings, they used all paragraph text and just sized up part of it to make their headings. Um, and Google treated it the same way, right? So some of it is what Google, when it's looking at your page, like, oh, they're clearly trying to accent this text. Um, they could just be reading CSS classes or what, I'm not sure, you know, how they're doing it, but um, you need to think be intelligent about the way that you use bolding. And so like for me, when I'm doing a specific page, there's probably like on my service pages, you'll be able to find something that might be underlined, bolded and italics. You might actually be able to find that three or four times. Two of them have keywords in it. The other three are only bolded and italics for users. So it's like, I'm actually using that bold and italics to emphasize um, some content on the page. Not all of it is keyworded out because I want to avoid the over optimization and make sure that I get 
um, whatever the fractal of the over optimization is that has to do with the way that you format your text because that was another thing that you used to be able to do um, just really easily just bold your stuff um, add it in the headings and you would rank really well right or you would instantly see results as how well you rank and now all these things are toned down but they're all a piece of it so there's 200 or 300 or 500 different factors like this you just want to make sure that you keep pinging the algorithm hitting the rubric in every single slot that you can do it right so then you also have your media and that means having an embedded youtube video uh, preferably a youtube video because youtube is owned by google and you can cheat on google properties essentially now it doesn't necessarily have to be your youtube video it's better if it's your youtube video that also has keywords stuffed in the description and the tags and all that crap um but then your image as well and all those things have metadata where on your images specifically you have a way to tag your location you have a way to tag keywords in the title um, you have the file name that we actually for every single uh, photo that we add to a web page we are strategic about our file name we almost always use one of these long gaudy link expressions for the file name on a photo um, or we just use the direct keyword for the file name on the header photo of that specific thing now um, maybe I didn't mean to tell you all that like that but that's you know some of the nuanced things that people are just missing like how are you naming all the photos on your site one two three four TX like no that's dumb name name it what it is right or name it a keyword that includes what it is right so there's or name name it what it is that includes a keyword I should say um, and be smart about it because Google can read the file name of that page if you're the only one in all the Greensboro for example for me the only one in all the Greensboro that has a file name on their website that is named Greensboro SEO I'm gonna rank better or at least get a little bit of a pop you know every little point matters and like nobody else is doing it okay you get the points for that nobody else did it right um, and then when it comes to the hierarchy URL structure is so underestimated um, I've actually seen one of my favorite uh, black hat trainings actually they're like doing a whole thing that is just a case study on the URL structure and how important that is like make sure you put your keywords in the URL of your site so I'm not gonna uh, for example if I want to rank my uh, web design page then I need to have a slash web design right and so often people are missing this where um, they're taking three of their different products throwing them on one services page and thinking that is gonna that they should try to rank that one services page for all those different products no you should break those down have different URLs for each of them um, and then rank that way and there's a bunch of variety here where um, you know as you're getting lower tier um, like further down more slashes you may want to lighten up on it if you have um, like for example with Greensboro SEO Pro I need to be careful about using Greensboro and SEO in my URLs I need to be smart about it but I can still do it and can can potentially still help me um, and there's also you know if you have images on your site or if you have other content other media on your site um, that you also want to rank how are those URL structures set up do they have a bunch of extra pieces in front of it very often like in WordPress for example if you're trying to rank an image you should probably turn off the archive feature that they have that immediately always puts your photos into um, basically the month and the year which is useful if you want to keep renaming photos the same thing over and over and not have to get like a weird URL um, but you're also adding more space between like Google and your keyword essentially so um, you want to do the same things within your internal linking so this is when I'm talking about hierarchy I'm talking about the you need a page for everything you want to rank for right um, sometimes if you have like a solutions oriented thing you might put all of the different questions and answers on one page because somebody might ask all those in succession and Google may want to just snatch that off and add it into the people also ask thing um, but you generally want to have a page for every keyword you're trying to rank and you want to point links on your website to that page that say that link so from my um, home page when I link to the web dev page the link is gonna say web dev or it's gonna be a button that is tagged web dev or it's gonna be a photo whose alt description is web dev or web development web design company or some long gaudy link expression um, or keyword expression to cover my keywords in that instance now um, the same thing with your off off page branded profiles and other SEO content so this is if you're writing press releases if you're doing guest blog posts if you're doing whatever else write 
words in those posts in those locations that you want to rank for and then link back to your website and you can link it back with the internal link but the more times that like if i write a web uh a um guest post on something like search engine land in order to better rank my web dev page i want to have web development web design web whatever in there 12 times as opposed to three or as opposed to two or as opposed to one and typically i want to use different variations and not do it in a spammy fashion right um so the same thing you want to do and this people so often miss this is with your off-page branded profiles that's your uh you know if you have a pinterest or a tumblr but always your facebook um maybe throw some links on your twitter to specific places like straight on your timeline um that also have to do with your keywords um but for example facebook has a thing where you can add like every single service you have so you should take a description probably a unique description for every single service you have add it in that within Facebook and any other platform that offers you something like that, like Yelp, um, so that your Yelp profile now has a bit of text about, for example, for me, the example I've been using about web de web design, um, as opposed to my full description that is talking about SEO and, you know, may mention web design once, but now I have an extra 500 words that is talking specifically about web design. And in the case of Facebook, it's probably pointing links back to um, my web dev page and doing all of that strategically is what it takes to you know, keyword stuff like a boss in 2019. Now, um, let me switch things over and we'll get straight into some live examples. So here we are in SEMrush and I have um, 140 keywords here in the Greensboro uh, section of this keyword tracking. Then I also have a carry keyword tracking that I'll show you in a moment. Um, but basically the um, since I guess what is this the 23rd so I guess on the 22nd I decided we were going to do this and you can, you'll notice a more fluctuation since then um, because we changed up some of our keyword targeting and, and some of that will dilute our SEO SEO expert Greensboro SEO keyword targeting in favor of internet marketing and marketing company um, agencies consultancy services as opposed to just like Greensboro SEO and expert which we, we were um, a little over optimized for not over optimized we weren't getting uh, downgraded for it but um, there's more keyword volume if we have more of these searches so um, you can see directly immediately we're getting gains from the second page of Google or the third page of Google um, to number three in the maps results for internet marketing consultant um, here's another one with consultant another one with consultants that you know we just weren't optimized enough for um, and it's important as you can see now these are all the same they're all three and these are all synonyms here um, but they were in different positions right they uh, and now they're all in the same place but they weren't before um, that's because even though these are almost the same darn thing Google treats them differently and that is the reason it's so important to hit your keyword stuffing the more of these various terms that you have um, it's almost like Google looks at it like if you just keep saying Greensboro SEO Greensboro SEO Greensboro SEO you're trying to do SEO on Greensboro SEO but if you say SEO in Greensboro or search engine optimization and then search engine optimization Greensboro and then Greensboro search engine or whatever the case may be um, it's like you're not trying to do it you're not trying to do it for search engines so they're like okay that seems more natural right and that's the same across your content across your links to yourself um, across your links that you build on other locations right um, so you see again we're associating agency more and we came from not on the first 10 pages of Google to now we're number seven in maps right um, you see that we have some site links on the SERP here for a few of these and then we're also in in the maps for some of them um, and that's immediately some of these have obviously dropped off we were number two for SEO services Greensboro NC we were number six for um, Greensboro Dig Digital Marketing Expert, but these don't get any searches, right? And this was the Winston-Salem page that was showing up for that anyway. So um, it makes sense for us to take these gains that are, you know, inter Greensboro Internet Marketing Company, Internet Marketing Services, Digital Marketing Services, all these are going to be on the first page within the next month or so, right? Um, and so it's worth it for us to slightly downgrade our SEO SEO expert um, in favor of these when even if our SEO expert were to fall to number two or number three, oh goodness gracious, um, then we could easily get that back up with a, a, a slight swing in the other way or by building some other um, assets somewhere else online. Now, um, as you can see from all these down here, lots of these that are jumping up are digital marketing, internet marketing, um, and you know, just some more general ones, right, that were not showing up at all before and they're showing up more now. They, these will continue to grow um, over time, but then, you know, there's still somewhere we 
we haven't gotten on here for yet. So marketing firms, um, marketing company isn't on here. It's jumped up there a couple of times, but it's n never stayed. I thought this one was actually up there for now. Um, SEO agency, we're not on there for that one yet. And it, we had some variations like that. Like what was the one that was number seven? Um, SEO agencies. You see how, how like SEO agencies, we show up. But SEO agency, we don't. And that is the whole point of this video is to say that it's important that you optimize your pages for all of these different keywords that are essentially the same keywords. Um, and as you can see, um, I just have web design entered here. I have a web design services page that is not linked up across the variety or across the most part for my site. Um, it's there now. And until we get like our social media marketing um, and other services pages, we're not going to add that into the menu or anything else. But um, I'm tracking it now to see if Google starts to show it before we're actually saying like, here, show it. Um, it's not no index or anything like that, but we are just I'm just curious to see what's going to happen. Um, now, when it comes to carry, I've made some changes on this page. I've, I have these really ugly location pages that I made originally on the site. Um, and we've already gone through and changed them. Like I had my dude create like a better, uh, prototype for it. That was basically a prototype straight from our homepage. Um, if I can find it in here, um, and it looks better than our other pages that look like that. So if you look at this sorry Charlotte SEO page, this is like, look, it's taking forever to load because these pay these photos are ridiculous on this page. Um, but it really doesn't even match our color scheme. Like it still has our old video on it. These fonts do not look right on this page. Um, but it ranks well, right? And it doesn't rank as well as it used to, but, um, it was good enough to get to like number three, um, in its heyday for, a larger city that is clearly not in my domain name like I was able to get to Charlotte before I even had a team with a website that says Greensboro right so um, this is the carry version and I have added it into SEMrush um, to see how it is now faring better in its ranking so it was still had probably like number three or something for Greensboro SEO expert or for carry SEO expert or whatever um, but I wanted to see as I switch this page um, how this one responded because it's in something that's such low competition like carry SEO I have a better chance to see how this page how Google responds to this page than if I did it for Charlotte where there's a lot more competition um, and if I perfect this page on something like carry then what I learned there will be basically the best framework to attack Charlotte, or at least give me a better base than um, if I attack Charlotte first and couldn't really tell from these results. So um, you can see that there's been lots of green, mostly all green here. And some of these, this is a lot of stuff down here towards the bottom that was not showing on the in the top 10 pages at all and now they are right so um there's clearly been some gain here gains here and there's a couple more things that we're going to do to these pages but um over the course of the next two months or so um we will see how well you know basically get a fully optimized version of this page and then pass that across these other location pages um once we have the perfected version again on this carry seo and eventually like we probably won't even have a carry seo page and we'll start moving on to other states because like there's no reason to have carry SEO page, right? Sorry, sorry, carry, but you're, you know, small. Um, and it was just a attempt to, um, take over North Carolina, which is what we did. Now it's time to move on. Now, um, when it comes to the different pages on the site, you can see that this page is much like the other pages on my site that, um, the homepage is not, um, like different all the text is essentially the same where I've just changed out carry for Charlotte or for Greensboro or whatever else now this one is different from the other pages on the site um, but that's really all it took to rank for Charlotte and Raleigh and Wilmington and Greenville and some most of those are still on the first page right I think it's only Charlotte and Raleigh that were ever able to kick me off of the first page um, and it's, it's like these are untouched pages for three years now I have like a a team that works with me we still haven't come in and done our pages so um, now we're starting to do that and this is part of that right so um, right here carry digital marketing and SEO I said some other words in here but this is like one of those long gaudy statements that has a keyword in it but this is like a h3 or h2 right here on the page unapologetically better than carries digital marketing and SEO companies um, and that's obvious because I'm like from Greensboro right here in this thing um, but there's this is also synonym of best in a way right now carry SEO 
digital marketing consultant, internet marketing service, SEO expert in carry, right? Um, this video should be changed and will be changed eventually. I might redo it today um, to be a carry SEO or carry internet marketing, carry digital marketing video, optimized video. Um, moving on down here, and this is a, we basically, I grabbed the, this section off the homepage and moved it onto this and pretty much called it a day when it comes to optimizing this text anew um, for Google. And we're just, you know, on the first couple weeks of this and there will definitely be some more tweaks in here, but there should definitely, like, we're not mentioning Carrie where there's only SEO campaigns in here once. Um, there could definitely be more keyword stuffing in this section. Again, probably the same thing goes for this one, but here we have search trap, search engine traffic, right? Um, online, which, you know, online marketing is another way to say internet marketing. Um, those are bolded and underlined, right? There's some other bolds and underlines on the page. And the fact that we have the other ones makes this one look less spammy and give you a better score for that makes that actually worth something. So here we are SEO company. Um, we actually did get one here and then SEO in carry NC. See how he did that, how easy that was bolding carry SEO and putting it in quotations, which I don't know why this quotation went backwards, but best SEO in carry mark consultant in carry or similar in Google um, search terms in carry and then how clever we are carry marketing companies look at that separated by the period just genius um, this photo I'm sure the file name is carry SEO or something like that um, it's alt text and whatever else is probably should be I will actually be checking that after this video and make sure that the this got optimized um, and then same down these pages so eventually we come to this web design and it one does have a it does actually have a link to what we're trying to rank for web design but and um, we added some web design words in here so that we can rank better for web design once we start to add that service page up here so um using things like uh accordion elements and toggle elements and sliders and things like that allows you to better keyword stuff because you can just add more words to your page without making it like a huge long um, page that nobody's going to look at um, but you see that there's just a ton of and really should be more on some of my pages like these pages the charlotte page and the raleigh page and those those are uh to an extent savagely done i remember i just stuffed the crap out of them when i first wrote those pages um and they you know that's we disregarded them completely um when i had him redo these pages right so um this has already resulted in some results in carry SEO and part of it is just because it's a new page you know there's a lot of factors there um, but there's more text on this page and a bunch of opportunities to relink so um, SEO expert we're linking to our post that says SEO expert most SEO companies we're linking to our posts as SEO experts first consultants first agencies um, and we're finding other opportunities to link to like our pricing our video SEO audit um, and our principles pages that are all important pages because they also then link to our service pages, right? And all these pages are interlinked to basically get the link juice flowing and then go into the places that we want it to go. And that is slightly dictated or largely dictated by the the anchor text that these links are. So how you use these links um, is super important. That's why this one up here, that's a direct link to the services page um, and across all these locations it will be the same link that says website design services right because that's what we will be trying to rank for um, on that services page now it goes beyond just any specific service page you want right so there's sometimes where because i'm a cheater and i really just don't care um, because the cheating i do is not like it, I can never get punished for this. Google's never going to hurt me for doing this. Um, but in order to increase our relevance for <laughs> SEO experts, consultants, and agencies, I wrote a post that just compares those three. And this post is literally written just to keyword stuff. Is that that's the whole point of it is to have a whole post that's written about SEO experts, SEO consultants, and SEO agencies. And I use it in the headings and whatever else you can come look on it. Um, here's another example. That is what is an SEO expert really? And those are literally, I'm telling you right now, the only reasons that those posts were written and added to our website is to rank better for those terms. There's no reason for you to read those except to see how clever and amazing our SEO is. Um, because there's lots of ways to do this for most businesses where you don't just have to do that. Um, um, you know, you don't have to write a pointless post. Now, somebody may read this post and may think that's a great post because um, it's not it's not written um, 
it's not obviously spammy. It looks like we took the time to write it and we did. Um, but it's, you know, it only has one purpose and it's to, um, ping Google for that stuff. So on a, on another level, um, this is our medium profile. Again, this is, I said, for your off page, you want to do this on your branded profiles as well as your, you know, your other link building efforts. We currently on Greensboro SEO Pro ever only have to use off page profiles. We never have to um, build any links so far, though. I get some links from uh, different expert interviews that I've done, but they don't even always come to Greensboro SEO Pro. Sometimes they go to my website, right? So um, we'll probably be looking for more opportunities like that over time, um, just because we're going to start going after national keywords. Um, but here's an example of us keyword stuffing. This is just a link back to our homepage that I'm trying to um, get ranking for Greensboro Marketing Company or Marketing Company in Greensboro or whatever else um, that I just sent a link that said marketing company to our homepage. So our small marketing company is on a tear in the new year, right? And the whole point of this was to keyword stuff for marketing company. I'm just trying to make myself rank for marketing company. Now, there's some other examples down here where SEO training channel, I'm trying to get um, relevance on the on this YouTube channel that you're watching this video on right now um, to rank for SEO training, SEO tutorials, SEO whatever else. Um, and this is just one of the first pieces of the puzzle, one of the first steps in the sand um, to do that. Now, um, here's an example of we eventually might want to rank for SEO blog, even though that's super competitive, way general and not necessarily that important for us. Um, but here's an example of just a uh, like the other type of links. I forget I forget what I called it on the other one. Um, curveball links where you just like write something else like I didn't put SEO in that. I just said blog about our feelings. Um, and that is you know, just a another link to the page that makes other links, especially when they're perfectly keyword targeted and perfectly distributed and perfectly this, perfectly that. Um, this one in the, you know, scope of Google's algorithms makes those look more natural or look more all right because we just got some random ones that have nothing to do with keywords whatsoever, right? Um, and this page, this post, again, nothing but YouTube embeds for SEO purposes. And all of these different YouTube videos have various elements of keyword stuffing um, within their descriptions within you know like this is a different way Google Analytics user data retention fix of saying protect your Google Analytics data from automatic deletion um, right and there's everywhere that I put this post I'm gonna find another way to say this maybe in the link that I send to it maybe in the a little description that I could have put here or whatever the case may be um, and you know we do this for all of our clients so for this one, I'm doing it all and I'm doing it like super lazily. I really don't care um, because I already know that I'm creating YouTube videos that are going to be better than other YouTube videos. And I'm using a YouTube channel, which is cheating for SEO anyway. Google just gives it a disproportionate advantage. So here I am doing that um, and I can then come in here and just create content for you guys. Like I'm never going to sell a course um, that... To, well, I won't say never. I'm not sure whether I'll sell a course, but that's not why I'm doing this YouTube channel. Um, but I can come in here and just create these videos that um, then this will also be incorporated into a keyword stuffing campaign, right? So if you look at all of our YouTube videos, um, we find ways to keyword stuff, even on the um, descriptions of the videos, um, even on the playlists that these are in. Like, for example, this is the first video. It's so awful. It's so bad um, that I originally had. But the fact that I put this in a playlist that said Greensboro SEO helped this video rank, helped my website rank because this video was originally the one that was on my page. So when I um, came and redid our homepage video, I made sure that I put it and I will eventually put it in its own um, playlist as well um, or put it in a playlist with a couple of other videos but I made sure if I can find it said SEO and internet marketing expert offers blah 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 because I'm trying to rank for SEO and internet marketing I'm I don't care so much that um, Greensboro SEO Pro is Greensboro's in the name I'm always gonna rank for Greensboro so I can go ahead and get rid of that within my targeting and now I'm going to try to get this to uh, SEO expert and internet marketing consultant nationally, right? Um, and, you know, some company and agency keywords in there as well, but I've already put a lockdown on the expert keywords with what I did three years ago, and now it's time, or I guess four years ago now, um, and now it's time to diversify across some of those other ones, but I'm never going to discard what, the work that I've already put in. So um, the last off-page profile I just wanted to show you now, Google Plus is dying, or it's dead whatever it was never alive nobody ever cared about it um, but that doesn't mean that you couldn't use it for good SEO and that doesn't mean that even now 
despite the fact that um, this is about to die, I'm still posting the last bit of our content here. Um, part of it is because Google is a con canonical directory. They, they will always see these links forever, regardless of even if they delete this, because they keep a time record that then links to the future, essentially. Um, and this is something that none of my competition is doing, would not do. So I'm the only one doing this and the only one that can get any little slight tiny bit of ping from the search engines that come from this for the to the end of time. Um, we also do similar things on like the citations profile, right? So there's all of these different factors, all these different places that you can have your content and have bits of your brand name with a link to your site that also has bits of content that have to do with the keywords that you're trying to rank, whether that is a specific service. A specific ideal client profile, um, a, a piece of your service, a question or a solution, whatever the case may be, um, that is useful for your business essentially, um, that you can put across your branded profiles, across your different content. Sometimes you're just creating posts to create relevance for those different keywords um, in order to rank for these things. And part of that is because whatever else Google tries to do, they're not going to be able to get rid of the semantic relationship in order to try to find out what's the best content. One of the great things that this has been able to, to allow them to do, because everybody believes the uh, hype about over-optimizing your content, now because people aren't doing all the stuffing stuff or don't even know that you can stuff cleverly in this way, um, they're able to more easily measure all content, look at it across like how well is this written using re readability tests, look at the keyword relevance and semantic relationships and say like, hey, maybe this post that just got posted that doesn't have any backlinks yet is the best post online for this. And they will start to show great content earlier because people don't think that you can use keywords cleverly or people don't understand how to use these keywords cleverly like this and to a degree i'm you know messing google up in that but they're always going to get better at it and i anticipate that they will um continue to do better but if i'm telling you like hey your seo company and this video is going straight to a couple of clients um your seo company is missing obvious things like how do you not you know optimize for all these keywords at the same time on this page or like like how do you um think you can get away with 150 words on this page and only have the keyword in here twice or you know especially when you compare it to the competition that has 1500 words on the page whatever the case may be i'll stop ranting about that stuff um i guess that's enough for this video there will certainly be other videos that this one links to or connects to um as i talk more and just say it like this um you know keyword stuffing as opposed to like optimizing on page or whatever because you keyword stuff on page and off page and you do it smartly you do it cleverly and you make sure that you're pinging google's algorithms for everything that you possibly can so um that's enough ram ranting about that um i guess you can go ahead and like my stuff and subscribe if you want to if not that's cool too of course if you actually need help with seo i'm here to serve you um and until next time i love you peace